And welcome back to our coverage of ONS 2017. We're here with Raghuram Parvantanini. He's a specialist at Verizon. And Raghuram, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being here. Now, it's your primary, sort of your core competency at Verizon is to make in networks more intelligent. It's really to automate the network. So you have this, uh, we're sort of in the midst of the Internet of Things, and you have a huge demand for uh, data consumption. How is that making your job hard, harder a, a, in making the network fully automated? Well. Gartner predicts that there would be around 30 million devices by the end of 2020. And the, those are huge amount of data coming out each and every day from those devices. Now, with the Internet of Everything and Internet of Things shaping up, it's very difficult to manage this data on the software-defined networks. So it's, the software-defined networks is completely software-based, and the software uh, systems have to be sophisticated enough to deal with uh, handling such amount of data. Right? And uh, a typical network would consist of uh, billions of nodes running millions of applications. So right now, as I speak, my uh, smartwatch is giving me an output saying that you have not walked in a while. So that data is being uploaded and it's going to tell me I have been lazy whole week. Mm. So all this data is coming onto your network and your uh, system should be intelligent enough to make decisions on its own. Uh, so uh, a lot of what you do as well is in the machine learning and the deep learning space as well. we have been hearing a lot about this, by the way, at ONS uh, 2017. Can you give us an example of maybe something that you're working on or maybe worked on in the past in the machine learning space? So machine learning is a very interesting concept and is also there's a lot of speculation on top of it, saying that uh, especially it is not suitable for uh, networks and all because you have to create models specifically for the networks and it is very difficult to do that. But there are a lot of new technologies and theory coming out each and every day which would help us to create those models in every day. And uh, the machine learning and AI takes in a lot of data, runs some analysis on top of it, and uh, can make some predictions or uh, can do some anomaly detection. So one good example is what Netflix does. Right? It takes your, your uh, data and it uh, gives out predictions about what you would like or what would be best suited for your next uh, show and all. The same concept we can apply it for the networks. One good use case would be security. So right now the security is all signature based. So we uh, create signatures about the traffic patterns and all. And we say, okay, we get this uh, type of data and we say this is uh, attack or something. Whereas the actual intelligence should be, we create a model out of it saying that this is what it is and anything outside the model is uh, considered as an attack. So that is one use case. The other use case could be creation of intents and policies. So uh, as an example, we can say that uh, when you want to uh, create an SD-WAN, right? right now it's an overlay network on top of internet. Uh, all you have to do is specify an intent saying, I need to have so much bandwidth from point A to point B. Right? And the, the system is intelligent enough to identify which is the best path for it, mm. and uh, what are the parameters that should go in, what are the configurations that should go into each device, and set us all automatically for us, without even any human intervention. Uh, Raghuram, I know one uh, concept or model that you focus on uh, often is HTM, and I'll, and I'll ask you to tell me what that is, but is it, is it in a sense, forecasting what the network, uh, the function, uh, forecasting the functionality of the network and then provisioning the network to meet that functionality? Yep, you're right. So HTM is a theory uh, which was proposed by Jeff Hawkins in 2004 in his book called On Intelligence. So this theory is uh, modeled on, based on our human neocortex. So the neocortex is uh, spread into different regions and each region has its own responsibility. Now all the regions are connected in a hierarchical fashion, so that's why the name hierarchical temporal memory. And also the regions are spread across uh, in spatial as well as uh, temporal, uh, yes. So spatial is where it is spread across space and temporal is time based. So all our, uh, when we see an object, it's, we don't recognize it in an instant. We have to see it for a few more nanoseconds to identify different parts of the object and to detect what it is. So the, temp, uh, the neocortex does this for us. HTM theory is based on the neocortex and it is also based on the temporal data. So the more data it sees, the better it can predict. So in the network, all you have to do is feed in live streaming data and it's going to predict what would happen in the next step. So now we know how HTM functions in the network itself, but as an application, uh, let's say in deep learning or machine learning, how would you apply HTM to let's say deep learning? So deep learning, uh, HTM are two different uh, types of machine learning or machine intelligence. So machine learning, initially it was uh, done by artificial neural networks. So they're based on uh, neurons which were constructed 50 years ago. And little was known about the physical anatomy and algorithmic properties of neocortex then. 
now it has evolved a lot the biological sciences and the neo uh, the neuroscience has evolved a lot in this 50 years but the artificial neural network stayed the same so they have been using the same properties since 50 years they have matured in terms of uh, computation power they have moved into much more advanced mathematical models and that is what deep learning is based out of so they are running on high performance systems they are running on high performance uh, mathematical models and all but still the base is the 50 year old uh, neo Whereas HTM is based on the new learnings about the neocortex, which have been done in the last decade, and uh, it employs the biological basis of human brain, and it's very close to human intelligence. And we know the most intelligent being is a human, and uh, it exactly depicts what a human does. Like. One thing I notice about coming to an event like ONS is, uh, in, uh, historically, they talk about sort of the technologies that allow the network to function, to work, um, but now we're talking about really the applications that the network allow or enables, and far more interesting, by the way. Um, and so machine learning is one of those topics, and I think we've just obviously just touched on that. So it's an interesting space. We'd love to have you back sometime. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you all so right. much. And uh, for all of our coverage here at ONS 2017, you can go to tinow.org. So long. <laughs>